starting with adult asystole PEA. So the first change is that we've added these standardized CPR instructions to match the state protocols. Most of the changes that have um, uh, that we've put into place for these protocols are to be more in line with the states, kind of similar to what we did with the adult um, airway protocols. <coughs> so um, minor changes to this box on the right. Um, so we've removed the term liver mortis and removed um, the submersion or inaccessible entrapment for 25 minutes. Um, and then minor changes to the H and T's, uh, H's and T's, so sodium bicarb was changed from one milliequivalent per kilogram IVIO to a standardized dose of 50. Um, and I know it says calcium uh, gluconate um, as one of the um, medications for hyperkalemia, but we're gonna remove that because we don't carry that. Um, so that, that'll be a change that will happen that's not outlined in this protocol. So moving on to bradycardia. <coughs> So um, we've removed this suspected calcium channel blocker, beta blocker overdose, um, and kind of reorganized the initial part of this protocol. This will still be in the pearls, though. Um, we've added uh, this 12 lead EKG for second degree and third degree AV blocks. And then um, big change here, so it's going to be an epidrip or dopamine as options for bradycardia. So um, no med control call for the epidrip. <coughs> and then sedation is going to be with midazolam only. So uh, adult cardiac arrest protocol, AC3. So once again, you'll see the standardized CPR instructions to match the state's protocols. So the same minor changes um, with the removal of some terms, the liver mortis and the submersion terms. And then um, this is a big change here. So we removed the 10-minute requirement uh, prior to placing the biads. Okay, so that'll be a big change for the fire crews. And then um, we've kind of separated shockable versus non-shockable rhythms um, to be more in line with the state protocols. So moving on to chest pain, cardiac and STEMI, removal of oxygen from the initial treatment. Um, also, we've standardized the language for STEMIs, uh, for STEMI notification and transmission. Um, we've moved the pulmonary edema protocol shunt to the end. Um, and the dosage of morphine has changed, so from two to five, it's now two to four, um, to match with the state protocols. <coughs> so CHF pulmonary edema. Um, We've uh, removed these indications for shunting to the airway protocol, or I'm sorry, changed them. Um, and then removal of the STEMI instructions, so instead you would just go to the STEMI protocol. Um, so no limit to sublingual nitroglycerin, um, but still every five minutes um, for um, advanced. So um, it's still going to be um, times three for basics. Um, so then also removal of uh, instructions for norepinephrine. Instead, you're going to be referred to the hypotension shock protocol. So adult tachycardia, um, this is the narrow complex regular rhythm. So removal of this QRS information from the top because it's already kind of listed on the top of the protocol. Um, cardioversion procedure for 50 and then 100, you can increase further. Um, fentanyl dosing was changed to a standardized dose of 50 to 75. Um, the initial dose of adenosine was changed from 12 milligrams to 6 milligrams. Um, and amiodarone was added as an option for this protocol. And then um, the other thing to be aware of, the dosing of the amiodarone or the concentration has changed. So it used to be 450 milligrams and 250 cc's, and now it's going to be 100 and 100 because it's a lot easier to dose. So that was some, after some feedback from you guys. Um, Diltiazem dosing was also changed. So this is now, um, and there's also age-specific dosing that was added. Um, so this is going to be bolus, drip, bolus. Um, and then we've removed this DILT-induced hypotension um, that was in the previous protocol. 
And a lot of these things we're going to touch on more with the cardiac pharmacology lecture. So um, you'll get to ask more detailed questions about you know, why certain drugs over others during that lecture. So adult tachycardia, narrow complex, irregular rhythm. So addition of vagal maneuvers as an option to match with the state protocols. Um, once again, this removal of the QRS information, since that's already written at the top of the protocol. Um, we've added the specific voltages for the cardioversion procedure. Fentanyl dosing was changed, so 50 to 75, similar to the prior protocol. And then um, this is the same diltiazem dosing as the previous protocol. And then once again, the removal of the dilt-induced hypotension. Um, and then another big change here, some metoprolol was added to this protocol. And we'll talk about which to choose, diltiazem over metoprolol, later in the pharmacology lecture. And then just additional information after the rhythm converts to match up with the state protocols. So adult tachycardia, wide complex, regular rhythm. So um, this is a change in its, of itself because it used to be just one protocol for wide complex tachycardia, so we've separated it into regular and irregular to align with the state. Um, so removal of the QRS information sim similar to the prior two protocols. Um, cardioversion procedure for 100 joules. Um, fentanyl, once again, standardized dosing of 50 to 75. Um, we've removed um, amiodarone dosing following electrical cardioversion. Um, and then the addition of adenosine here um, for SVT with aberrancy. And we'll, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And then um, amiodosing 100 and 100, similar to the prior protocol. Uh, the dosing of uh, lidocaine was changed from 1.5 to 1. And then um, this additional information after rhythm conversion, similar to the prior protocols. All right, so this is the wide complex irregular rhythm. So uh, once again, we've, this is a new protocol since we've separated the wide complex into regular and irregular. Removal of that QRS information, cardioversion with standardized voltages but can increase further. Fentanyl dosing change 50 to 75. Um, removal of amiodarone following electrical cardioversion, um, uh, and then the same amio dosing 100 and 100. Um, and then we removed mag sulfate. It's still going to be in the pearls, and it's still going to be in your cardiac arrest. Um, but it's removed from this. Or sorry, from the. Uh, actually, never mind. Scratch that. It's it's removed, <laughs> but it'll still be in the pearls. And then the lidocaine dosing was same, similar to the previous protocol, 1.5 to now one and then that same um, post-conversion information. Am I going too fast, guys? OK, good. <laughs> um, so VFib, Pulsus VTAC. So once again, these standardized CPR instructions from the state. Um, epi dosing was changed from every, three, uh, from every four minutes to every three to five minutes. And then standardized CPR instructions once again. Um, amiodarone infusion was removed. Um, the lidocaine dosing was changed and a maximum was added. Um, magnesium was moved um, and the infusion for magnesium was removed. And so this is another big change. The dual sequential defibrillation is going to be after five defibrillation attempts. This is in line with the state. I do anticipate that this is probably going to change with the next iteration of state protocols. But for now, um, we're going to match up with what the state does. Um, and then removal of calcium chloride, calcium gluconate from the protocol. So post-resuscitation, there are a lot of changes here. <laughs> Um, as you can see, it looks very different from the current protocol. So we've changed um, some, uh, had some minor changes to wording for optimizing ventilation and oxygenation. Um, we've removed this requirement to stay on scene 10 minutes, and this is this is going to be up to to paramedic provider discretion. Um, we we figure by the time you package the patient and get them ready to go, it's going to be about 10 minutes anyway. But this is up to your discretion now, um, so you're not required to stay on min, um, on scene for 10 minutes after resuscitation. Um, we've removed this wording for the post-ROSC checklist, but it st should still be completed. 
And then um, we've removed kind of this additional information and instead just um, put the, um, the, the shunts to the other protocols to make this a little bit more streamlined. Um, so ventricular assist devices, uh, very, very few changes to this protocol. Um, just m kind of rearranging some things in this box here um, from the pump sounds. So, um, but it's essentially the same information. Um, so team-focused CPR, this is a big change. Um, so this is essentially um, matching up with the race cars project and the pit crew CPR um, that's done throughout the state. Um, I'm not going to go into the intricacies of this protocol um, because we're going to be doing this during our simulation, so everyone will have a chance to practice. Um, but I, I do want you guys to look at this closely, and, and you'll get a chance to um, go in more depth during the simulation. Um, so on-scene resuscitation termination of CPR. So this is a big change as well. So time zero is going to start from BLS or ALS. So um, I know we're doing ALS right now. So fires time on scene counts towards the overall time now. Um, so BLS plus ALS CPR greater than 20 minutes with an end title of greater than or 10, um, you're going to continue. If that end title is less than 10, then you stop. If, it, if you're at 30 minutes and the end title is less than 20, you can stop. Um, and if you're on scene for greater than 45 minutes and your end title is still greater than 20, you can terminate or you could call med control kind of up to your discretion. Okay, any really quick questions about those protocols? Yeah. The, uh, the pressers, the epi versus the dopamine and bradycardia patients will have to call for epi but not for epi. You don't have to call for epi for bradycardia, for the epi drip, yeah. Okay, so um, moving on to the procedures. I don't think you guys have these, um, but there aren't a whole lot of changes. So no changes with the 12 and 15 lead procedure. Um, with the cardio version, we've just updated our voltages to reflect our protocols. Um, with uh, external pacing, um, we've removed asystole and PEA as indications for um, external pacing. We should not be pacing people in asystole or PEA. I'm sure you guys know that, but we just removed it from the procedures. Um, so for CPR procedures, um, we've just added this uh, avoidance of excessive depth greater than 2.4 centimeter or 2.4 inches to match with the AHA guidelines. Um, Lucas device, uh, traumatic cardiac arrest is removed as a contraindication. And then we've uh, placed instructions to make sure that we're placing that Zoll puck um, on all of our um, cardiac arrests, even if we're using this, the Lucas device. Um, so no changes to the automatic defibrillation, no changes to the manual defibrillation. Um, dual sequential, so this is, the title has changed, so it used to be dual or double, and now it's changed to dual. Um, and I think that's it. Okay, any quick questions? I have one. Did you want to briefly mention what we talked about in the QA meeting about 12 and 15 lead EKGs and the timing of when we get those? Yeah, so if you, if you find, um, if you have a STEMI with a 12 lead EKG, you should go ahead and transmit that prior to waiting to obtain the 15 lead. Got it? Because we've noticed that our, our um, times are kind of creeping up, and that was one of the potential reasons that was identified. Is that what you wanted me to yeah, comment on? Yeah, I thought you were saying that there's not as great an, of an emphasis on acquiring 15 leads routinely yes. as we once did. So in chest pain, I think it's reasonable, but I don't think that every time you get a 12 lead, you need to get a 15 lead. Um, we rarely do that in the emergency department, only if there's a high suspicion. So I don't think that it's a requirement. And I, we've removed it from most of the protocols, um, the requirement to do the 15 lead. So um, chest pain, I think it's reasonable, but for for other, other reasons that you might be getting a 12 lead, I don't think it's necessary to do the 15 lead. From, from the time, as far as I know, and Lee, correct me if I'm saying anything wrong, but as far as I know, we've only identified one um, STEMI from a 12 lead, and that was Mike. Yeah. Or from a 15 lead, sorry. <laughs> I hope we've identified more than one with a 12 lead. <laughs> okay. 
Great, so, um, and I can chat with you guys more about that throughout the day, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this next lecture.